So here's the situation. We have six deadlift platforms at Untamed Strength. Four of them are doing great. Two of them, not so hot. More specifically, the floor underneath it is destroyed. I made the mistake of putting two of the platforms at a spot on the ground where the concrete, two slabs of concrete meet. So there's already a crack in the floor and I don't think the concrete slabs are completely even. So the floor is taking a beating. How bad is it? It's pretty fucked. Two new platforms for the two new squat racks coming in on Monday. Right here, and right here. Yeah, if you could uh, hurry up and finish this, Alan, that'd be great. Thank you. As I'm doing this, I'm reminded of my old jobs before the Marine Corps. I used to be part of a grounds crew where I do landscaping, I do maintenance work. I've been a painter for a little while where we would pressure wash, mask, and paint buildings for school districts. And the work was miserable. I hated it. Going to work every day was like a, it's like this black hole of 10 hours, sometimes 12 hours, where I would just count down the seconds and the minutes and I couldn't wait for it to be done. But now, doing this kind of stuff is actually not that bad and I kind of enjoy it. It's pretty relaxing. And doing it because I want to do it makes it a lot easier to do. So I'm happy that I can call this stuff work. And I remember I used to always look at the clock and go, oh my gosh, it's only 10 a.m. I've still got six hours, seven hours left to this. But now I frequently find myself looking at the clock and go, how is it already 2 p.m.? I have so much stuff to do, I can never seem to get it done. I would much rather not have enough time in each day to finish my to-do list because it's so long than to count down the hours, minutes, and seconds of a long, dreadful day doing things that I have really have zero interest in. Especially when that long to-do list is full of things that I wanna do, not necessarily things that I have to do.
that's it for today. I'll show you the racks once I get here tomorrow. All right, everyone, the next couple of videos that I release this week will be of my meet week training. This is day one on Monday. I'm competing on Sunday of this week, a United States strength lifting meet, squat, press, deadlift. Now, this is what my coach, Austin Baraki, has me doing, and it's tailored to me. Like I say in all my training videos, this one week of training is a bit out of context, and your meet week might differ from mine, because it's all kind of determined by what your training leading up to this meet looks like. But you guys are here to see what my meet week looks like, so here you go. Honestly, this day was not that great, but I always try to keep it 100 with my fans, so I'm gonna post it anyway. Day one on Monday, I worked up to my squat opener. This did not move as fast as I would have liked. It was a bit sticky. But I'm not gonna freak out because I'm not too concerned with how it moved on this day. I'm concerned with how it moves on game day. Also, last week was a tough week of training. I squatted 545 for a single, 495 for a triple, and then more triples. I pressed 240 along with a bunch of other reps. I pin pressed, I deadlifted 565, and then some triples on top of that. I pin squatted 515 along with a bunch of other pin squats. Oh yeah, and more pressing, I was tired. So the product of all that work doesn't need to be realized today. It'll be realized in a week on meet day. Now quickly, because I don't have much time to talk on this video, my training is RPE based, but I actually use a lot of percentages. Leading up to this meet, I would frequently do a top set at a given RPE, and that would kind of set the standard for the day and it allows me to practice heavy-ish singles. After that, I perform multiple sets using a percentage of my top set. And I'm gonna briefly walk you through how I determine what weight to use today, on this, on this day that you're watching right now. For those of you that are brand new to RPE, you can just loosely follow percentages that correlate with the appropriate RPE using any free RPE percentage chart on Google Images. For this squat single, I rated it at RPE 8.5, meaning I could definitely do one more, maybe two. And I'd be willing to bet that this is gonna feel like a solid RPE 8 on meat day. But to make this math easy, let's call this an RPE 9. I could have only done one more rep. Now looking at this percentage chart, one rep at RPE 9 would equate to 96% of my one rep max. So, 510, divided by 96%, 0.96, equals 531, would you look at that? Now again, I'm not too concerned with this number being lower than I'd like it, because I squatted 545 last week, so I know I can do that. But based on how this particular rep moved, we're gonna go with an estimated one rep max of 531. After my opener, I had to do three reps at RP8, which equals 86%, of my one rep max. So 531 times 0.86 equals 456. So I did three reps with 455 pounds and I actually ended up rating this set at about an RP7. I could have done three more, which is okay. Sometimes you overshoot RPE and sometimes you undershoot RPE. Then I had to drop 10% from the bar weight and perform another set of three reps, which was 410 pounds. Now, while well, most people would probably rather coast through this week and maybe knock out some squats with 50% or just go home, I actually appreciate these couple of back offsets because they give me a last chance to practice, which helps build more confidence going into the meet. Next up is the press. I worked up to a single at RP9, which means I could have done one more, but not two and it ended up being 225 pounds. Again, that's 96% of an estimated one rep max. So 225 divided by 0.96 gives me an estimated one rep max of 234 pounds. Then I did three reps at RP9. Three reps at RP9 equals 89%. So 234 times 0.89 equals 208 pounds. 
I rounded down to 205 and it ended up feeling like an 8.5, maybe two more reps. So in hindsight, rounding up to 210 would have probably been a better choice because it would have been most likely RPE 9. I don't always use this percentage chart because I have an idea of where my numbers will be for the day. I've used RPE for a little while now, so I'm fairly familiar with it and what I'm capable of, but I'm doing this to show my work, if you will. After my three reps at RP9, I dropped 8% off the bar and performed two more sets of three reps. Now after this, you'll see me deadlift up to my last warmup before my opener. The reason I'm making this video is because this meet week is a lot different from my meet week one or two years ago. One or two years ago, I might have lifted on Monday, might have lifted on Monday, and it would have been very light. Then I would have taken the rest of the week completely off, probably just stretch for 20 minutes every day. During an entire week off, you can actually detrain. Now, you're not gonna lose 25% of your strength or something extreme like that, because strength does not rise and fall that quickly. But not training for an entire week could definitely be the difference between a successful third attempt and a failed third attempt. Along with that, this is very important, there is no reason to make a drastic change to my routine or your routine on the week of a meet. I have been training consistently four days per week for the past five months since my last meet, with the exception of last week only being three days because some of my variations dropped off, so training was consolidated into three days. But I haven't missed a day of training in five months and even my deload, or what I now call low stress weeks, were still fairly heavy. And without taking a week off of training, I was still able to hit multiple PRs during this last training block. Four PRs just last week. So why make a huge change by dropping off the face of the earth for one week before a meet? It's not a good idea. Obviously, change has to occur, that's how you taper or peak, <clears throat> but it shouldn't be as drastic as sitting on the couch for an entire week. That's it guys, stay tuned for day two and day three of my meet week training. Until then, always remember. Tread on time.